Welcome to Play Connect. I'm your host, Craig Sullivan. And today, we have Emmy Highs from CoStar joining the conversation. But before we bring her in, I do want to thank our production partners, Red Roof Franchising and the good people over at Chicago Titles National Commercial Services Group, California. They'd both love to hear from you if you're thinking about signing up with a new new brand, call our friends at Red Roof. If you need to get your deals closed on time, call our friends over at Chicago Titles National Commercial Services Group. They'd both be happy to help you and let them know that producer Danny and I sent you over there. So with that, let's welcome Emmy Heise, Director of Hospitality Market Analytics at CoStar Group in beautiful Denver, Colorado. Hi, Craig. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so glad you're here. And just so that everybody knows, Emmy's going to be on one of our panels at Click 5 on March 10th, 2022 at the beautiful JW Marriott and the Anaheim Resort. So, Emmy, let's just jump right into this. What are you seeing in the hotel market out here in California? Uh, so, in general, with trends um the california hotel market had their peak occupancy uh since the pandemic in july things did slow down in august but we're seeing that nationally it's not specific to california uh we call it the summer surge there was a ton of leisure travel and that's really what uh spiked performance in hotels and it is expected to slow down in August and into the fall and winter months because generally it'd be the group and corporate travelers that would offset the leisure visitors. Unfortunately, that pickup is not where it was pre-pandemic. It is better year over year, but not near where it was. Um, in terms of comparing California to the total U.S., uh, occupancy and ADR for absolute values are higher than the total US and that's in line with historical trends without the pandemic. But if you're indexing California to pre pandemic levels, it's slightly behind the total US recovery. So if we're looking at Revpar, um, in August, California is 17% below pre pandemic Revpar levels, whereas the total US is only 8% below pre pandemic levels. So that's a quick overview. I can go that's, deeper. That's I can talk for a long and time. Scary all at the same time. And that's why I love your your information and your company. Um, let's let's get into some of the services that CoStar offers to the few people that may not really know. Now, I, you know, you cover a plethora of different services and you know have been outstanding information providers for the hotel industry for decades so but let's get into some of the you know services you've got there costar please sure so costar is the leading provider of commercial real estate information analytics in an online marketplace so we have loopnet where brokers can list properties we have 10x which is an auction website apartments.com is actually a costar uh, company, um, and then CoStar Suite, which is what I live in, is all the data you could possibly imagine that I love because I'm a nerd. And CoStar acquired STR in 2019. The STR data was loaded into CoStar um, at the end of March of this year. And so I guess my favorite thing to say about CoStar, because I used to be an analyst, I used to do performas on the brokerage side, as well as the acquisition side for hotels. It, it's a single source of information. I can look up comps, I can look up trends, I can look up census data, I can look up pipeline data, everything. Oh, and CMBS data. I mean, there's just so many things. I can do a radial search and find out the top tenants near a hotel. It's pretty cool. You know, your comps, bar none, are the best in the industry. Okay. Um, I always thought title companies had, you know, a good source of comps, but you guys far outdo them and anybody else out there. And that's, I, I think that's that's just a, a hallmark that everybody should know about. And if they're not using your 
comparable sales data they certainly should um mm -hmm. i think it's it's just a staple and it's got to be there yeah we have um, an amazing research team and i yeah. um sometimes email them like hey here's this comp and they're like yeah we already know we're on it i'm like of course you are thank you <laughs> <laughs> they're great <laughs> yeah that's that's good to know that really is i like that um you touched a little bit on the construction pipeline what are you seeing California, Western U.S. with the construction pipeline. Is it robust? Is it faltering a little bit because of pricing of materials and supplies and labor issues? What's going on there? Yeah, so we're kind of in an interesting part of construction where actually more rooms are opening um, this year compared to most of the other years. And part of that, to your point, is delays of you know, construction of uh, labor or materials not getting there. So rooms that were supposed to open in 2020 are getting pushed to 2021. Um, so for example, for California alone, right now there's um, nearly 20,000 rooms under construction. And for the annual year of 2021, if every hotel opens on time, 15,000 rooms will be added to the California market which would be the most rooms added in California since 1990. So the pipeline is very um, heavy right now. And part of that's delays. And that's why I say if it all opens, because projects could get delayed to 2022 even at this point, it's just the opening dates as of now. In terms of trends that we're seeing like for the total US, the in-construction rooms are actually falling. So as hotels open, less are starting in construction. Um, the final planning rooms are also falling. However, the planning phases have skyrocketed. So people are thinking about it. It's just hard right now to get financing, et cetera, et cetera. And honestly, we've seen this type of pipeline activity with almost every cycle. It almost seems like construction peaks and then right during this recessionary times, and then it goes low and then it starts to gradually build up again. So it's looking that it's going to trend that way, like we've seen in other cycles. Nice. You know, I'm liking that. And not to toot my own horn, but at Click5, yeah, we've got five lenders that have continued to make loans throughout the pandemic. And that's all they do is hospitality loans. So there's another reason to attend besides meeting Emmy and getting dialed in on everything that CoStar has for you. Um, how about repositioning of hotel assets, brand conversions? What are you seeing out there? Yeah, so I actually need to uh, plug one of my colleagues, Jan Freitag. I'm sure a lot of people in the hospitality industry have heard of him. He's the national director of hospitality at CoStar. And he wrote an article about this a couple months ago. So if you want to dive deep, check it out. But the bullet points, I would say, is most conversions, brand conversions, tend to happen in the recessionary period. Um, and part of this is due to funding, not being able to pay for a PIP, not being able to build a new hotel. Um, most of the conversions are brand to brand. And also most of the conversions are to like a lower class um, hotel because they don't want to, you know, pay the PIP to keep a brand, but they want to keep a brand. So they just go to the next lower class in order to, to keep it working. But again, this is what we've seen in previous cycles. So we'll see what happens in this cycle, because as everyone has said, no one has seen anything like this before. Absolutely. And, you know, and I also think, you know, with the brands having their soft brands, um, you know, if you're an independent hotel, you have a nice hip chic, cool boutique hotel somewhere, um, you know, now's a good time to, you know, help with your, occupancy and depend on that res system. So I think there's a lot of positives out there. And I think brand conversions are with us for at least the next 24 months from what I'm hearing from our various friends at all the different brands and their development teams. So, yeah, I would... all right, Emmy, are you ready? We're going to do the lightning round. Are you ready for that? Yes, ready. All right. We're going to have two minutes on the clock. Word association, phrase association, first thing that pops into your mind, okay? Okay. You ready? All right, here we go. Demand. Picking up. Guest amenities. 
Mm, unique offerings. <laughs> nice. Travel. Fun. <laughs> Road warrior. Ooh, not going to be back for a while. I'm using more than one okay. word. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Remote working. Oh, man. Hybrid. Training. Training. A necessity for success. <laughs> yeah. Favorite airport? Well, I have to say DIA, although it is under renovation right now, but I love the white tents. <laughs> there you go. It is a beautiful looking airport. Uh, favorite leisure hotel or resort? Oh, geez. Um, I would have to say probably Terranea. There you go. Nice choice right here in LA. I love it. I want to, but. <laughs> I want to travel to Greece, but I don't want to get stuck there away from my children. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Team. Collaboration. Work-life balance. <laughs> Ongoing battle. <laughs> there you go. And you did it with 32 seconds left on the clock. All right. <laughs> Congratulations. So I think we're both in agreement that business travel is going to be a little while. Groups are going to be a little while. Yesterday here in California, the state uh, started uh, mandating uh, that they had to show vaccination cards with a negative test or a, uh, uh, the, a card that you have been vaccinated to go to what they're calling super events, which are capacity of at least a thousand. So, I, I, I mean, it's all in a state of flux. And as you and I, you know, chatted when we rescheduled Click. You know, that was part of it. Health and safety was first and foremost. So don't get me wrong on that. But everything is instead such a state of flux. I've been getting phone calls from you know various people in different companies going, Craig, we've got a no travel order right now. Craig, we're only going to send one person to your conference instead of five. You know, so uh, unfortunately, all the earmarkings are out there. But looking into the CoStar crystal ball, do you have any idea on on when we're going to start seeing a return to a normal cycle with business travelers? You know, uh, it's interesting. My team and I were talking about it today and we were saying, you know, initially that corporate travel would come back first and then groups. And now we're kind of rethinking that because of the delay of return to offices and it seems that the people getting together are like, well, let's get together as a group, smaller, controlling safety um, concerns, everything like that. So um, I think that it'll start building back up, um, you know, probably 2022 Q2. Um, in general, we are projecting a full recovery depending on the market between 2024 and 2025. But obviously, we can't fully recover without groups or that corporate demand. I agree with you. And, and I've been saying this for months and months, years, it seems like at this point. All roads to a financial recovery lead through travel. Whether you are relocating your company or you are relocating your family. It's that getting on an airplane, going to that city, staying at a hotel, doing your due diligence on the market and seeing if that is someplace that you want to relocate to. Uh, I do think you're right about, you know, corporate travel. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a little while and we sorely need it. And I, one of the things that I like, and it's, I'm hoping it's going to be an actual category at some point, and that's leisure. <laughs> I really like that. Um, you know, you're on the road a lot. I'm on the road a lot. Now you can take the family with you for a couple of days on the front end or the back end, whatever it may be. Um, you know, there's, you know, the companies are good with it. They're understanding that you can still work remotely. And if you haven't figured out that people can work remotely, you need to accept that fact really quickly because a lot of teams, 
are not wanting to go back into their office on a regular basis. We've got some very creative people here in California, and they're letting their teams stay remote, but they want them in like a week, a month, and they're breaking them up into department time when they can come into the office. They've also lowered the amount of square footage they've got in their offices. So we're seeing some of that. I do think there's there's a, a bubble ready to burst with class A office space. I, I really do. I just I I just don't see that getting back to the the peaks that we had prior to the pandemic, at least not for you know three to five years at least. Um, you know, you've got the entertainment industry out here and they run very scared on a lot of different things. And Viacom, CBS, Universal, NBC, various others, they're not bringing back their, their teams till next year. So that's also kind of pushing that corporate class A office space down the drain a little bit, I think. But we're in hospitality, so we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, what new thing are you seeing in the hotels that are under construction that piques your curiosity, whether it's a trend, is it improved lighting in the, in the bathroom facilities, in the guest rooms? Is it, you know, is it the ability to check in with your phone, have the key on your phone? What, what are you finding out in the hotels that really, that you like a lot? Uh, so in June, uh, I stayed at the, Seabird Resort in Oceanside. It just opened, I believe, like it just opened like a week before I went. I went on a much needed girls trip. And I think for me, and this just comes from my background, uh, because at one point I worked for a hotel management company, I really appreciate those small details. (laughs) And so it might not be other things that people notice. But one thing that was really cool is when you walk into the bathroom, there was like the underlight under the vanity that would automatically turn on. And so instead of like searching for the bathroom light and then it's this bright light in your face, it was just this very subtle under the vanity light. And I thought it was so cool. Um, I love that they put reusable water bottles in there so you could, and you could take it with you um, and fill up water. So I like kind of the sustainability aspect that they might be adding, you know, as far as automatic lights, reusable water bottles. I appreciate those those details as well as just the beautiful designs those designers are so creative with hotels and to make it have a local feel right right see that's it that's what i think a lot of people have forgotten that that hotel whether it's branded or not should celebrate the area that it's in and i love the idea of the the under lighting and the cabinets in the bathroom you're right you know it all of a sudden it gives you just enough glow where you can see everything and you're not you know kicking the tub or the door or something else uh, but it's those little touches that bring you into that neighborhood and i think a hotel when it's hitting on all eight cylinders it celebrates its community it's that third or fourth bedroom at times you know at the holidays You know, you've got a ton of family coming over. Okay, I live at the beach. I've got a very small house. My infrastructure is very small, okay? So it's like, no, you're not staying here. There's a hotel right up the street that's really nice. We could have breakfast there. That could be the base camp. I'll come over, boom, 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 and we're off and running. Um, And same thing at the holidays. I mean, you know, you have people staying with you, and it's just like, okay, we're not going to have everybody sleeping on the floor in the living room because – you know, it's a holiday. That's where all the presents are going to be open and, you know, various other things. So, yeah, I, yeah, my favorite place to be is a hotel lobby. I love it. I just, you know, it's, you know, five people or a hundred people, it's five stories to a hundred different stories and your imagination just runs with it. So. Definitely. Definitely good people watching it's, in a hotel lobby. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Emmy, we are out of time. Thank you for joining us today. How can everybody get a hold of you? Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is from on my email, which is eheis at costar.com. And I'd love to hear from you. Any questions you have? Perfect. Thank you for joining the conversation today. And we'll have you back soon. Great. And you get a chance to meet Emmy at the fifth annual California Lodging Investment Conference on March 10th, 2022. So thank you. Thank you for having me. 
Thank you, our audience, for joining us today. And also, I'd like to thank our production partners again. Red Roof Franchising, Chicago Title National Commercial Services Group, California. Please reach out to them. They'd love to hear from you. They're great people at both organizations, and they're there to help you. And thank you, our audience, for joining us today. And if you would like to be a guest, suggest a topic, be a production partner. DM producer Danny or myself. We'd love to hear from you. And please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Smash that bell so you're made aware of all the updates and when they hit the, the internet. We'd love to have you be a part of it. And thank you. And remember, be kind. Share your knowledge. Now go be amazing.